How do scientists predict the weather? You're going to find out today by using the observing weather gizmo. Our goal today is to use the weather gizmo to observe the weather in different cities around the world. Record your data. What patterns do you notice? What happens to the air pressure, temperature, wind speed, and or direction before the weather changes? How can you use that knowledge to predict the weather? Okay, directions. Make observations in several different cities. Record your observations in the journal for each day. Stop either when you fill up the page or you're able to see what happens before the weather changes. Three, take a screenshot of your data. And four, paste the screenshot into your Google Doc. The Google Doc is right here observing the weather gizmo. So here you have space for three cities, and I don't mean for you to stop at three. Keep adding spots for different cities you observe. Okay, so I started with three, you keep adding more, as many as you need until you see a pattern in your data about what happens before the weather changes, before the weather becomes rainy from clear or before the weather becomes clear from rainy. And then down here, once you see that pattern, write it down. What changes did you see in air pressure or wind direction or wind speed or uh, humidity before rainy days, before clear days? What patterns did you see? And that's your conclusion. To get to the gizmo, you're going to click on this link here. And then you're going to click on login. And you're going to sign in using the username and password that you created for the gizmo's website. Once you're here, you can click on any of these cities. So you might want to click on a city that's far away from the equator and then a city that's near the equator. Maybe you want to click on a city that's near the ocean and then a city that's far away from the ocean. And then you want to click on January and then July, and then you want to observe the weather in that city. When you get to observe the weather, you're going to use the weather station to measure what's going on with the wind speed, the temperature, the precipitation, and the humidity. And we're going to measure it for an entire day, starting at midnight and going until almost the following midnight. Now, if you just want to see what the weather is like in this city without doing measurements, you can play the simulation first and just watch it. And then you can reset it again. You can watch it without taking any measurements whatsoever. Just see what it's like. So you can find out if it's going to rain or snow or what is it like. And then you can reset and start over. 
Unlike in real life. <laughs> you can't do that in real life. But this is a simulation, so we can. That's one of the benefits of using a model. So this time I'm going to set it to pause the simulation every three hours so that I can take measurements. Now I'm going to play. Oopsie. I forgot to take my first measurement. Reset. I'm going to start with the temperature. And I see 70 degrees, 80 degrees, and there's one, two, three, four, five lines. So 10 degrees divided by five lines means that each one is two degrees. So that's 70, 72, 74, 76, 78 degrees. And to me, it looks like it's right in between 76 and 78. So that's going to be 77 degrees Fahrenheit, I think. And now I'm going to click on wind speed and direction. Now, I know that I'm always looking north in the simulation. And that means that left is west and right is east. So that means this anemometer is facing north, east. And I'm going to click on it to see if I was right. Ooh, I was. Look at that. Six miles per hour northeast. So six miles per hour, N E for northeast. And precipitation. Now I'm going to click here on the rain gauge. I have zero inches. That's 0 0.5 inches. That's one inch, 1.0 inches. But right now it's completely empty. So that's just zero inches. And humidity. I'm going to click on the hygrometer. And that's 70%. 80% and I see one, two, three, four, five lines. So again, we have 10% because this is 100% humidity. Um, there's 10%, five lines. So 10% divided by five means each line is 2%. So that's 74 or 72, 74% humidity. So I'm going to type in 74 and now I'm going to press play and the simulation automatically pauses at 3 a.m. and I can take all the measurements again. It looks like it's gone down to 76 degrees. And ooh, the wind has changed. Now the wind is coming from the southeast. Check my guess. Oh, the wind's not coming from anywhere. It's zero miles per hour. So if there's no wind, you don't have to put a direction. And precipitation, still none. Zero. Humidity. Ooh, the humidity has gone way up. We're at 82, 84, 86. We're all the way up at 88%. Press play. Precipitation, we've got some this time. Oop, just 0 0.1. Cause see there's 0 0.5 and there's one, two, three, four, five lines. So that means that's 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0.5. So 0 0.5 inches. And now let's check the humidity. Oh, notice the rain gauge dumped out, so it's going to measure only the amount of rain um, between this reading and the next one. Okay, so it looks like we're down um, between 80 and 82%. I'm going to round up to 82%. 
and start my next measurement. And I'm just going to keep going like this until I fill up my table. Now that my table is full, I'm going to analyze my data. So I'm going to look at the times when it started raining, and I'm going to look just before that and see what happened. Did I see a change in the temperature? Hmm. I didn't see a big change in temperature here. There's a one degree drop, not a big one. Did I see a change in the wind? I did see a change in the wind. The wind speed changed and the wind direction changed. Did I see a change in the humidity? the humidity increased before the rain okay so it went from 74 to 7 or to 74 to 88 before the rain okay and here we went from northeast and it was facing i remember it was facing southeast yeah i should put that there even though it was at zero, it was facing southeast. So it had changed. So the wind direction and speed changed. So the wind decreased and changed direction. The humidity increased before it rained, and then before the rain stopped, the humidity decreased again. So the after it started raining, the humidity decreased, but not like once it started raining, it, the humidity didn't change very much. It sort of stayed constant while it rained. There was a big change from raining to not raining though the humidity decreased a lot look from raining to not raining it went from 82 to 67 so humidity decreased and here the wind stayed the same and here the um looking at when the rain started again here we the precipitation started again and we didn't, the humidity decreased a lot. As the rain started, the humidity increased a lot. Look at that 67 to 97 percent. So that wasn't in our, in the three hours before, but in the time between three and six, we went from 67 percent to 97 percent. So sometime in here, the humidity increased a ton. Um, the wind direction did not change. The wind speed decreased a lot. The temperature decreased a lot. So I'm going to write those things down here um, in my notes.
Now I'm going to take a screenshot of my data so I can put this right into my Google Doc. And I'm going to right click on this and copy it and put it into the data section. I'm going to resize it by using the corner because I don't want it to look squished or stretched. And now I can move on to a different city or I can change it to uh, January and I can keep collecting data. I'm going to need lots of data if I'm going to see a pattern because I want to know that this works not just in this city, um, but I want to see if it works around the world to know if it's really a rule of weather.